Ultrasound examination was performed to rule out abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is a transverse image at the proximal portion of the aorta. The diameter of this vessel is normal. This is a sagittal image of the proximal aorta. A portion of this vessel cannot be seen due to interference by air in the esophageal gastric junction. Color Doppler can be shown in this portion, the proximal portion of the aorta. The pulse Doppler signal is normal, indicating low resistance flow. There is continuous blood flow throughout the cardiac cycle in this portion of the aorta, which is normal. Another color Doppler image of the proximal aorta demonstrates that it fills completely with moving blood, just inferior to this portion of the aorta is a beginning of an aneurysm. And uh, the origin of the uh, SMA is indicated on this image uh, above the level of the uh, aneurysm. The diameter of the middle portion of the aorta is increased, the maximum dimension being 4.8 centimeters consistent with abdominal aortic aneurysm. Color Doppler of a transverse projection of this aneurysm demonstrates uh, an area that does not fill with moving blood and is likely thrombus. Sagittal image of the aneurysm demonstrates a rind of thrombus surrounding the aneurysmal dilatation. The pulse Doppler waveform is high resistant and this indicates we are below the level of the renals. Uh, no reverse flow is clearly seen and this is an abnormal signal. This is a transverse image of the middle portion of the aorta and the flow lumen and outer dimensions of the aneurysm have been measured. The maximum diameter of the flow lumen is 2.7 centimeters. The same image without the measurements. This is an area of color Doppler uh, at the superior portion of the aneurysm. Uh, the origin of the renal arteries cannot be determined. Uh, the length of this aneurysm is 7.4 centimeters. The aneurysm does taper and the maximum diameter at the distal portion of the aorta is 2.5 centimeters, which is in the normal range. A color Doppler of the distal aorta demonstrates that it fills completely with moving blood. The Doppler waveform is again abnormal. There is no clear reverse flow and turbulence is present within this signal demonstrating flow on both sides of the line. The normal site at which reverse flow would be identified uh, demonstrates no such reverse flow. This is a color Doppler of the right common iliac artery which demonstrates that it is enlarged but fills completely with moving blood. The Largest diameter of the right common iliac artery is 2.8, indicating that there is an aneurysm in this vessel as well as in the aorta. This is just a side-by-side -side images, grayscale and color Doppler of the right common iliac artery, again demonstrating the enlargement. The pulse Doppler waveform within this artery is abnormal, demonstrating no reverse flow, although high resistance blood flow is present. 
the left common iliac artery is normal size in both diameters shown on this transverse image. The pulse Doppler waveform is abnormal and is monophasic. Another pulse Doppler waveform of the left common iliac artery demonstrates a monophasic waveform. The common femoral artery is normal in size and fills with color Doppler. There is a uh, monophasic waveform present with turbulence demonstrated uh, below the baseline. The right common femoral artery is normal in size. The right common femoral artery fills completely with moving blood as demonstrated by the color Doppler portion of this image and the pulse Doppler waveform demonstrates a triphasic waveform. The blood pressures at the posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis arteries demonstrate a decreased pressure in the left leg and a normal pressure in the right leg. This patient has a large, nearly five centimeter in diameter aortic aneurysm extending near or possibly through the origins of the renal arteries. There is also a small aneurysm in the right common iliac artery and Doppler interrogation of the left common iliac artery, common femoral artery, indicate that there is a disturbed flow. Evidence of disturbed flow or significant stenosis is supported by decreased blood pressures in the left posterior tibial artery and left dorsalis pedis artery.